Hey guys, Mac here. In this video, we're going to be tasting and reviewing backcountry coffee. There is nothing better than starting a cold morning off in the backcountry than with a hot cup of coffee. Coffee gets us warmed up and excited to set off for a summit or to log some miles. However, when you're backpacking, it's not exactly an option to carry some big coffee setup in with you. So instead, we opt for instant coffee and single-use pour-overs. Today we're going to be testing a whole bunch of different options and sharing all of the results with you. Owen is actually our resident coffee aficionado, so once we get to tasting, he will actually be taking the lead on this one. Thank you so much to our friends over at REI for hooking us up with a bunch of different instant and low maintenance coffee options that they carry for this review. We're so excited to try them. All right, let's get caffeinated. I also might already be caffeinated. Before we dive into our taste test, I did quickly want to take you through our cooking setup that we carry with us for making coffee and meals in the backcountry. We've been using this MSR Win Pro 2 for the last couple of years now. We actually picked it up just before hiking the John Muir Trail, and we really like it because it packs down to be really small. It's very efficient on fuel, and then with this little dial, you get really nice flame control. For pots, we use this ever new titanium set. We purchased it again before doing the John Muir Trail with the intention of heating up water and cooking for three when we are hiking with Owen's mom. A set of this size is a bit overkill for just Owen and I. However, we've continued to use it a lot because we love backpacking with friends. And when we carry this, they don't have to bring an additional setup of their own because it gives us the ability to cook for four. I have fallen in love with this pots and pan set because the titanium construction makes it incredibly lightweight. And conveniently, the lid also makes a cap for the whole setup and the MSR WinPro 2 perfectly nests inside the pot. Thus, the whole system takes up less space in my pack. When we're wanting to travel with a more size appropriate cook setup, we will use the jet foil. And I love this handy little color changing panel. It changes to the color orange to let you know when your water is up to boiling temperature. Last but not least, we use the GSI Infinity Backpacker Mug. The Backpacker Mug is ultra lightweight, weighing in at just 3.5 ounces, and it is made up of a plastic insert cup, an insulated sleeve with an attached handle, as well as a resealable lid. The cup insert is multifunctional in that it is graduated and gives you measurements in cups, ounces, and milliliters. We really love that feature because you can perfectly portion out your water that you need to make a beverage or a backpacker meal. Pro tip, do not leave this clipped to the outside of your pack. Unfortunately, the sleeve does not have the world's tightest grip on the cup, and thus we've lost one of the cups on trail. Please don't make the same mistake that we did. All right, enough chit chat, let's drink some coffee. We thought that we were going to actually be using this jet boil uh, to make some of these samples because hypothetically speaking, if it was just Owen and I in the backcountry, this would be probably what we would take as our cook setup. However, when I went to use the first pour over, I found that the way that the water comes out, it just falls out and you have no control over it. And so most of the water was not going into this very small opening of the pour over system and it was kind of just falling down the side of it. 
I probably won't be using this at all for any of these tests because I just don't think that I would use it for a pour over. However, we have an instant option. I will use it for that because I have the entire mouth of the cup to pour into, so I'm not worried about accuracy. All right, so we've got five back country coffee options here. All are kind of, two are instant, three are pour overs. And we have one that is kind of a mix. It's not just coffee, it's got some like added, cream. Added bonuses. Let's start with that one actually, cause it doesn't have a lid. So this is the Laird Superfood Insta Fuel. It has some MCT oils in it, if you're into that sort of thing. It's uh, gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan, paleo, non-GMO, and soy-free. Um, and it's a coconut-based creamer. So it's still an instant coffee with the coconut creamer on the inside. It's like obviously a coconut creamer in there. It's got that like kind of coconut and e aftertaste, but I really like that. Um, I find personally when we're on trail that I prefer if we're having an instant coffee to have a mix like this with a creamer in it. I'm not the biggest fan of the instant coffee flavor. And so this kind of, it disguises it. I think it's really good. Yeah. Um, I think that it's obvious that there's a lot of fat in it. It's got 10 grams of fat per serving. Um, and yeah, it's got a coconut flavor. It's a little bit oily because of all that fat and oil, but yeah, it tastes fine. I think that those extra calories and fat are very helpful when you're hiking. Yeah, doing long distance type stuff. All right, that one's awesome. Shall we move on to our next instant, truly instant? Yep. So this is the instant coffee that actually tastes good by Alpine Start right here. So this one we made in eight ounces of coffee uh, out of the single sachet and it's a medium roast. It doesn't have the obvious instant coffee flavor that you usually get with instant. Oh, whoa. It's uh, not particularly strong in flavor either though. It's like sort of just, it's unoffensive. I would call that very unoffensive, but I am surprised like genuinely that flavor, that instant coffee flavor is not there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd certainly drink it. And I think that what I really like about these is actually how tiny the little packets are, but this is pretty true to form, I would say for like an instant coffee. Oh, it says you can also drink it cold or mix it in with milk. We would never have milk on trail, but could be nice to have it cold like in the afternoon or something as a pick me up. Solid. Yeah, I would call that super solid. I'm super impressed that it doesn't taste like a traditional instant coffee. Yeah, it's faintly there, but it's not strong at all. Yeah, it doesn't punch you in the mouth. So our next one we were using as our label, so it got a little wet in the process, but this is the Kuju Coffee Single Origin Papua New Guinea Pour Over System. So it actually comes with a single use little pour over guy. So this will be the first of the pour overs. First of the pour overs. We have two single origin and then we've got a blend. All by Kuju. Ooh, this one smells like real coffee. Mm. Yeah. There's definitely something to those pour overs. It makes you feel like you're getting a real cup of coffee. It's yeah. really hot still. Yeah, it is really hot. I'm like, Thinking I might want to like take the lids off some Unsheath of these, these yeah. bad boys. Yeah, it tastes more like a regular cup of coffee for sure. No complaints on that one at all. If that, if we were having that in the backcountry, that would be delicious. It, that feels fancy. Yeah. That feels like really, really fancy. I hope I didn't just burn my tongue and cannot taste anything for the rest of the time. <laughs> yeah, this one's got like a lot more sweetness that the others haven't. Obviously this one, the Laird had sweetness, but it had sweeteners in it. This one is just coffee and it's got nice sweet flavors. Yeah, so it says it has notes of maple syrup, red oak, and dark chocolate. I kind of tasted berries, but my tongue is a little burnt now. So yeah. <laughs> well, who knows? I'd say that one is That's a winner. super solid so far. Up next, we've got another Kuju single origin. This one's from Ethiopia. 
Thank goodness this one's not as hot. <laughs> yeah. This one is really bright tasting. It's got a lot of mm. nice flavors. Maybe my tongue's burnt because I don't think I'm tasting that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not getting a ton. I think that this one might just have been brewed a little too cold and I'm not getting a ton. Hmm. That's funny because I, I really feel like I'm getting more flavor out of that one than this one just because this one's so hot. I'm sure when mm. this one cools down a little bit, that being said, I might take the lid back off because I kind of want to circle back to it. Yep. And last but not least, we have Kuju's Base Camp Blend, which is their medium roast blend. I think they have a light and a dark as well. They do. And they all have different names. This is perfect because we would use it at Base Camp. Right off the bat, this one is probably my least favorite of the pour overs. Mm, yeah, I agree. It's a little bit more bitter. I'm not picking any like specific flavor notes out of it either. It's less sweet, more bitter than the other two have been. Not quite as smooth. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I would take any of these over what we have been having at camp. I really do enjoy a coffee in the backcountry with a little something extra in it. And the reason being is we spend a lot of time on trail. I think it's nice to get a little extra boost out of your coffee. Um, and it just feels like a, a warm beverage is nice in the morning. It's like multifaceted. So I'm going to put the Laird Superfood Insta Fuel Coffee pretty high on my list. I feel like if I was packing for just myself, I would probably pack the Insta Fuel just because I like the added bonus of what's in it. But as far as like the best cup of straight coffee that's up here is the Papua New Guinea for sure. I think the after tasting cups of pour over coffee and then coming back to the instant coffee, like I had a hard time with it. Um, even though I will say that this is one of the better taste, it is the best tasting uh, instant coffee I've probably ever had. So I'm gonna go number one, just because personal preference on uh, the Laird Superfood. Number two on the Papua New Guinea Kuji pour over. Number three is the Ethiopia pour over. Number four is the base camp blend pour over. And then back to the base camp, or this is not the base camp, but the Alpine start mm -hmm. instant coffee in last, unfortunately. Although I feel like I'm impressed still with it. And mm -hmm. the fact that I've never gotten any enjoyment maybe out of instant coffee. I like the little added bonus of the MCT oils and the fat and the stuff like that. Because I just sometimes feel that I have a hard time getting enough calories on trail. In fact, on the John Muir Trail, I did carry a mix and I loved it. It was so nice to have. And I would have it with lunch. So it was kind of like a pick me up. I think that the Laird has its special place. If I'm If I was worried about fuel for a long period of time, that would be something I would consider more highly, but going strictly off of taste for my own preferences for coffee, I also I would put the Papua New Guinea number one, the Ethiopia number two, and then I would probably go to the Laird for three. Wow. I'd go Alpine start four and this Kuju number five. Whoa. And my reasoning being that the taste difference between these two to me is a lot less and the convenience of the instant and lack of trash gives it the leg up over the Kuju base camp, just for me. Whoa. Uh, can I revise mine? <laughs> so astute. <laughs> no, I completely agree with that. I think that that's an important thing to keep in mind when considering all of this stuff. But also, I would not be mad like if I woke up and had to drink the Alpine Star at all. Like yeah. We've got had far, far worse. <laughs> Often when we're in the backcountry, I'm sort of resigned to the fact that we're not making an excellent cup of coffee anyway. So it's to me like it's not that big of a deal no matter yeah. what. Which one are you reaching for to finish? The yeah. Laird. After we're done filming. That's yeah. the true test. <laughs> Which one are you going to take? The Papua New Guinea. You're going to let me have a sip though, right? You can have the other ones. Those are our rankings for these five backcountry coffee options. Um, and then I'm just going to pass it off to future me to sum all of this up. Future Owen is very smart and really likes coffee. <laughs> so does current Owen. There you have it, everyone. Just so you can see it again, here's how we ranked the backcountry coffee options. 
If you're interested in any of the coffee we tried today, they're all available at REI, and we've got links to them in the description of this video down below. We'd also like to mention that we'll be reviewing a slew of different coffee brewers in an upcoming video to find out which one is best for car camping, overlanding, van life, whatever you want to call camping in or by your car. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Until then, we hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you down the road. Control and it no titanium set. I have fought, sorry, make a meal or a. Uh, I was so close. I will join you on your quest to get hyped. I feel like we're gonna levitate through this day. I'm actually really stoked that we have like this much left of it. It's actually the, one of the things I thought about when I was gonna be on camera was my glasses are probably filthy. <laughs> Still filthy. Let's listen to some filthy man tell us about instant coffee. Okay. In the description of the video down below. In the description of this video down below. You hope you found this video helpful. Mm.